Hello, and welcome to worship here at Bread of Life Death Lutheran Church. I am the pastor here, and my name is Michelle Lewis. I am thrilled, actually we are all thrilled, that you are here with us to worship today. Hello, my name is Dorothy Sparks. I'm a deacon here at Bread of Life, and I'm also glad that you're here worshiping with us today. Welcome. Thank you, Deacon Dorothy and Pastor Michelle and everyone at Bold. I am very excited to join you in worship today. I've lived in many places around the world studying and learning about other cultures. I am so grateful to be here at Bold and learn more about American deaf culture. And do you mind introducing yourself? I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm Jen and I work at Bethel Lutheran Church as the engagement coordinator. Um, should I say more? Nope, that's good. I'm David Evans, ASL interpreter. Dorothy saying, today is February 7th. We have two special things happening today. First, today is the last Sunday of Epiphany. We have been praying for experience to understand God more. That we can experience God more fully in our lives. And so next week, we will hear about the Sermon on the Mount. When Jesus was transformed. And as we search for God in life, I want us to think about how we ourselves are transformed. Secondly, we want to welcome Dr. Jen Kilps from Bethel Lutheran. She's going to be preaching and teaching with us today. And we're really glad that you're here. Pastor Michelle is saying, yes, definitely. Welcome, Jen. So today is the last day of sharing preachers between Bethel and Bold. Next week, I'll resume preaching again. But we will partner together again during Lent for our Wednesday evening worship services. Dorothy's saying that's right. In Lent, our theme with Bethel will be helping the earth laugh with flowers. So we're going to be learning about um, several things. First, the crisis at the border, economic injustice, assumptions that we have about people who are overweight and disrespect for elders learning from other cultures. 
And then finally, water justice and environmental discrimination. Michelle's saying these issues often can feel hopeless, empty, overwhelming. How can we help the earth laugh with flowers, for example? Where can we create or reveal or be part of a new hope and a new life? These are the issues that we're going to explore during our Lenten season coming up on our Wednesday night worship services. And now, we invite you to light a candle in your home as we begin worship today. Deacon Dorothy, in this season of waiting, of longing, of looking for you to come into our world, congregation, we are seeking light. Deacon Dorothy, in our own lives, our neighborhoods, our families, congregation together, we are seeking light. Deacon Dorothy, in our work, our country, our world, everyone together, we are seeking light. Deacon Dorothy, Jesus promises that when we, congregation, seek and you shall find, knock, and the door will be opened, ask, and it will be given to you. Let us pray. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, source of life that gave us birth, fountain of living water, our light and our salvation. Amen. Prayer for the day. Lord Jesus, you are a healer. By your goodness, you healed many who were ill, even raising the dead to life. Restore us to new life healing our hearts, minds, and spirits. Then, when we offer praise and gratitude for your compassion, let others accept your healing too. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who is himself new life. Amen. Gospel? We will be um, hearing about a man whose faith was so great that he didn't need to see 
Jesus in order to believe in him. Today's Bible reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 7, verses 1 through 17. After Jesus had finished all his sayings in the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum. A centurion there had a slave whom he valued highly and who was ill and close to death. When the centurion heard about Jesus, he sent some Jewish elders to go to Jesus, asking him to come and heal the slave. When they came to Jesus, they appealed to him earnestly saying, this centurion is worthy of having you do this for him, for he loves our people, and it is he who built our synagogue for us. Jesus went with them, but when he was not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. Therefore, I did not presume to come to you, but speak the word and let my servant be healed. For I am a person set under authority also, with soldiers under me, and I say to one, go, and that one goes, and to another, come, and that one comes. And to my slave, do this, and the slave does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at the centurion. Turning to the crowd that followed, Jesus said, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. When those who had been sent returned to the house, they found the slave in good health. Soon afterwards, Jesus went to a town called Nain, along with the disciples and a large crowd. As Jesus approached the gate of the town, a man who had died was being carried out. That man was his mother's only son, and she was a widow. With her was a large crowd from the town. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion for her and said to her, Do not weep. And then he came forward and touched the bier and said to the bearers, Young man, I say to you, rise. The dead man sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him to his mother. Fear seized them all, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has risen among us, and God has looked favorably on God's people. This word about Jesus spread throughout Judea and all the surrounding country. May you have more and more grace, mercy, and peace from God, our creator, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. When I was in my 30s, I went back to school and got my PhD in theology. I, I attended divinity school in Scotland at the University of St. Andrews, where Prince William 
met his wife, Kate, where apparently golf was invented. I lived there for eight years and I lived in this small town on the coast, which was geographically very isolated. St. Andrews is the capital of the kingdom of Fife, where Macbeth was king. It is still called the Kingdom of Fife. And it should be mentioned that the national animal of Scotland is really the unicorn. For real. St. Andrews is a green and sea swept place. And the town itself has only three cobbled main streets, each about six blocks long. While living there, I attended an Episcopal church since they don't have many Lutherans in Scotland. It was a very traditional church, almost indistinguishable from our Lutheran services, but with a few exceptions. Every Sunday before we took communion, we would say, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. They still use this word in Scotland, shall. It was a hard habit to break when I returned to the United States. People would look at me funny. These words are almost the same words that we hear in our gospel lesson today. In this story, we hear of a centurion soldier whose beloved servant was sick. Now, a centurion is very much like our military generals. Very distinguished and respected. He was also a Roman, not Jewish. And this is an important distinction as the two did not mix. He lived in Capernaum and kept peace in a land 
where many people lived, many different people. Some scholars believe that Jesus might have lived in Capernaum. He certainly performed many miracles there. When this Roman general heard that Jesus was approaching the town, he first asked some Jewish elders to ask Jesus if he would heal his servant. These men did so because the general had helped them build the synagogue and was good to the Jewish people. Then, then when Jesus was almost at his house, the general sent some of his friends to give Jesus a message. Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. Therefore, I did not presume to come to you. but only speak the word and let my servant be healed. And Jesus was so impressed with this man's faith. A faith so strong that he knows Jesus will heal his servant, even if he doesn't see him. that Jesus will and does heal the servant. This man was a Roman and a general of soldiers and a keeper of the city. For all intents and purposes, it is more likely that this man would arrest Jesus for coming into town rather than having even a little belief that Jesus could heal. And generals don't typically care about their servants, much less even notice them. But this, but this centurion's faith amazes even Jesus. I love this story. It is such a dramatic example of faith that it amazes me too. But I would like to come back to the general and the servant. This centurion asked for his servant to be healed, not himself. The general thinks he is not important enough to have Jesus even in his home. Certainly not important enough to approach him over the matter of a sick servant.
But he asked Jesus that his servant be healed. So hearkening back to when I was at my Episcopal church in Scotland, before, before we took communion, we all said in unison, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only and my soul shall be healed. We take communion into our bodies. We eat and drink. Our bodies are literally home to who we are, the house of our very souls. What we were saying was, God, we are not worthy of you. We are broken, we sin, we are compared to you worthless. But if you just say so, we all will be whole and complete. But D Jesus doesn't just say so. Jesus goes way beyond just saying so. Jesus gives his life for us. God's love is so complete that not even death will separate us from it. That is what the word grace means, undeserved love. We don't deserve the gift of Jesus, but Christ dies for our sins nonetheless. Bless. As Christians, we have faith in God's grace. And our faith is most likely not as impressive as the centurions. I personally don't feel like I am amazing God with my faith. Sometimes I can barely recognize it as such. But I am amazed with God's grace. God's amazing grace. A sacrament is an act that imparts God's grace. In the Lutheran Church, we have two sacraments, baptism and Holy Communion. This is what happens in communion. We humbly confess and repent that we are sinners. But through the sacrament of communion, we are made whole. Our 
over and over again. Think about this. Come back to it whenever you take communion. Even if it is blessed over YouTube or Zoom. Think about your body. Do you have pain? Can you feel it getting creakier? Does it betray you? And consider God's grace. Reflect on the faith of the centurion and how Jesus was amazed by it. Give space and gentleness for your faith to grow. And know And know that even though we are not worthy, God's grace in the death and resurrection of Jesus, Christ has made us whole. Amen. like we've been doing in past weeks, we would ask that you type your prayer requests into the YouTube chat box. What people and situations do you want to bring into our time of prayer? Please share as you're willing. Prayers for the people. Lord Jesus, light of the world, accept our prayers. Use us to reflect your light so that places of darkness in our world would have your light. Then all nations will be drawn to you and be overwhelmed with joy. Amen. Pastor Michelle.
At the birth of Christ, the angels sang a song of peace and good news for all. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Deacon Dorothy, and also with you, Pastor Michelle. Please share peace from God with one another now. Whether that be through text, email, a handwritten note. Take a moment and share God's peace. Uh, just as we invite you to take time to share peace with others, we also invite you to share some of your money. Often God surprises us in lots of different ways. And one of the ways that God always surprises us is that when we give away some of our money, we feel a connection with that place or with the people or with the event where we shared our money. That's why we give our offerings. That's why we give some of this money we have. That's why we give it away. It helps us be connected. And we ask you for your some of your money here at Bread of Life because God has given us a mission. God has asked us here at Bread of Life to share this good news that Jesus heals us, that Jesus stays with us, that in fact, Jesus loves us so much that he is willing to die for us. God has asked us to share that good news with the deaf community in particular so that people in the deaf community knows, know that God loves you and that here at Bread of Life, we love deaf people too. So we invite you to share some of your money at this time. You can send a check to Bread of Life or you can use PayPal and that information is available on our website. Let us pray an offering prayer. Good teacher, in your life, you show us how to live, to live with compassion, peace, and generosity. Bless our gifts with your love so that we may use it for your purpose in our world. Amen. And now let us pray as Jesus taught. Feel free to join us in sign language. This will not be spoken in English.
God gathers us together and God sends us from this place. As you go, receive this blessing. God of glory lives in you, names you beloved, and shines brightly on your path. Deacon Dorothy, go in peace, love and serve the Lord, be the light of Christ. And everybody said it, thanks be to God.